पंचाकलुर्भ्य कृपा सिंधुदेव पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वेलकम ऑल फॉर दिस थ्री सेशंस ऑन एटीन चैप्टर ऑफ भगवद गीता भगवद गीता हैज बीन द लाइफ लाइन फॉर ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द भारतीय सम वर्षिप भगवद गीता सम रीड भगवद गीता वेन समबडी इज अबाउट टू पास अदर स्टडी भगवद गीता many distribute bhagavad gita just like during the marathon the iskon devotees are distributing prabhupada's bhagavad gita and today for next 3 days we'll focus on understanding the 18th chapter the summary of the 18th chapter and what is the 18th chapter of bhagavad gita the 18th chapter of the bhagavad gita is nothing but summarizing the every chapter what krishna presented the second chapter of bhagavad gita is prelude what he is going to speak and 18th chapter of the bhagavad gita is about what he spoke as you read the bhagavad gita you will realize the powerful song presented by sri krishna on the battlefield of kurukshetra to such an extent in the chaitanya charitamrit when sanatan goswami asked lord chaitanya mahaprabhu that i want to hear the atmaram verse what you spoke to sarvabhauma bhattacharya and what did lord chaitanya said you know i can't explain because he was a madman i was a madman what came out of us i don't know similarly in the mahabharat at one point of time arjuna asked the same question to sri krishna he said my dear sri krishna i kind of forgot what you spoke right and krishna chastised arjuna while embracing him and he said what i spoke imagine the knowledge spoken by para brahman he says what i spoke i spoke and rather than repeating the bhagavad gita as it is krishna spoke something called as anu gita a longer version so something like bhagavad gita is an eternal eternal knowledge but still it is driven by the inspiration based upon certain occasion it is our good fortune that vyasadev with the help of ganesh bhagwan ganesh they actually brought out the essence of this bhagavad gita and presented what krishna spoke the bhagavad gita in 40 minutes or less than 40 minutes imagine how condensed it is as you read every time it is not an exaggeration it is a reality every time you read it reveals to you something newer concepts takes you to the deeper level of reality recently somebody was telling me that whenever i leave this world i want to hear the beautiful conversation of sri krishna and arjuna because those who are encountering these verses of bhagavad gita regularly they will have some understanding even if they don't know the sanskrit language the bhava the words will thrill them to such an extent as if they are on the battlefield of kurukshetra listening to the divine conversation so we are simply going back to bhagavad gita another very interesting teacher said all the teachers of the bhagavad gita and all the students of bhagavad gita are all the students of bhagavad gita 
actual bodhaka. Actual bodhaka means what is taught to the student, the person who is learning and the person who is teaching. Here, all the teacher accept that I am also a student and student is also a student. But Gita is actually the speaker, Bhodaka. So today we will try to go directly into the learning of Bhagavad Gita, discussion of Bhagavad Gita, hear the words of Sri Krishna and understand the essence of the entire Bhagavad Gita presented in the 18th chapter. I'll go through the 17th chapter, whatever Krishna did as fast as possible. The first chapter of Bhagavad Gita deals with observation of Arjuna, right? Observing the army. But that observation was with attachment. Arjuna had no conflict with his duty. The conflict of the duty appeared to be conflict because the people were involved. Bhishma and Dronacharya. That is the first chapter. Second, Arjuna used many arguments to cover his conflict. He tried to prove that he is a great scholar and he tried to convince Krishna and his arguments were very substantial. But still they did not enlighten Arjuna. And in the first chapter Arjuna decided not made a conflict, a complete decision but he was walking into the journey of deciding Hey Govinda, I will not fight. That is the first chapter. And the second chapter is Arjuna continues his argumentation. And then immediately what, did, what does he do? Arjuna yeah, he has a courage to submit beyond his argument. When somebody is arguing so nicely at some point of time Arjuna had the courage to say Bas! Karpanya doho pahata sobhava prachamitam dharma samuda cheta. And what does Krishna do in the second chapter? Krishna in the second chapter, imagine Krishna did not come with all the preparation. It's a natural knowledge. Why it is natural knowledge? It is a natural knowledge because it is connected to the laws of life. It is an eternal reality presented in a most profound way by Sri Krishna. Foundational knowledge to overcome temporary pain. Krishna spoke to Arjuna about how we are not this body. We are a spirit soul. But still we have a body and therefore we have to perform the duty. And Sri Krishna explained to him that one should perform duty because of fear. If you don't, people will condemn you. One should perform the duty because there is a reward. One should perform the duty as a responsibility. One should perform one's duty beyond thinking about death and life because one has to do. And then Krishna explained to Arjuna that karma is inevitable without being attached to the results of the karma. Not that one should not be dutiful to action, but one should not be obsessed with the consequences of the result. And then Krishna spoke about equanimity. Right, Whether you win or lose, if you are able to function, then what will happen? You will move forward in life. Then Krishna concluded with Samadhi. Right, There is a Karma Samadhi. Karma Samadhi means what? You are completely involved in action, but the consequences of the actions are not binding you. That is the second chapter. And then Krishna, in the third chapter, what he did? He explained to Arjuna yeah. He says, action is applicable to all. Karma Yoga means what? Action applicable to all, whether you are a conditioned soul, whether you are a liberated soul. And even Sri Krishna told about himself, even I perform action Arjuna. It's very important. Sometimes there is an argument by people 
that whatever Krishna spoke till Sarva Dharman Parityajya. Now, once Krishna spoke Sarva Dharman Parityajya, rest everything becomes redundant. It is not possible. Go back to the third chapter. Krishna is talking about even the liberated soul, like Janak Maharaj. Why do they perform their duty? They perform their duty because they know Yadyad Acharati Sreshtat Tattat Evetaro Janaha. One has to perform. Then Sri Krishna telling Arjuna, forget about the conditioned soul, forget about the liberated soul, even I perform the duty. So Swadharma at no point of time gets cancelled. Sarvadharman Parityajya and Swadharma are integrated. They don't cancel each other. Right? Action seen as Yajna, the fourth chapter, caused by knowledge. There was an action, but here Krishna explains in a greater depth about Karma Yoga, makes action into Yajna. Action into knowledge. And the interesting part of Bhagavad Gita, you hardly find where Krishna emphasizes karma as the cause of one's pain. Karma is there. But more than karma, it is ignorance about karma and its consequences. And therefore in the fourth chapter, he speaks about different kinds of yajna. And he explains to learn these different kinds of yajna, one has to approach a adhikruta, bona fide spiritual master. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprasna sevaya. And what does it do? Once you approach the spiritual teacher, spiritual master, then things appear as it is. Right? All the moha is destroyed. Api chetasi papebhya sarvebhya papakrittama. One who is situated in the board of transcendental knowledge. He can cross over all kinds of pain. That is the fourth chapter. And in the fifth chapter, what does Krishna do? Krishna explains action without attachment, going deeper. If you study the third chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, in one sense, there is such a coherency, but Krishna is taking one to the deeper level of reality. It's called as karma sannyasa. Now, karma sannyasa is not giving up karma, but karma becomes like you are breathing, but you are not conscious. You are walking, but you are not conscious of walking. Like an expert driver when he is driving, he is not worried about who is here, who is there. It is a seamlessness which gives rise to alertness, people coming from you know, backside, people who are in the front side, people in the other side. He is driving seamlessly as if he is not involved in that driving. Just like breathing. We breathe, but we are not conscious of breathing because we become expert in our breath. Similarly, the fifth chapter talks about action without attachment to such extent that action becomes irrelevant. Not that the action is cancelled, but it doesn't bother once. And then sixth chapter, Krishna, what does he do? He talks about the means to achieve all the aforementioned aspects. Third chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, he talked about what to do. He talked about what happens when you do. But how to do it? How to come to that level of reality? The sixth chapter, he talked about yoga. Now the Bhagavad Gita sixth chapter, please do not cancel. It is not about Ashtanga Yoga alone. The sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita is the foundation for all yogas. And therefore, just before speaking that famous verse, right, Madgate Nantaratmana Shavdavan Bhajate Yobam Samayukta Tamavata. In that verse, before that, what does Krishna say? Tasmad Yogi Bhavarjuna. One of the most profound, simplistic, practicable definition of yoga Krishna gave. Yukta Hara, Yukta Vihara, Yukta Chestasu Karmatu, Yukta Swapnava Bodhasya. Right? That appropriate action, appropriate recreation, appropriate rest, appropriate sleep, appropriate work. 
integrating all of this, nobody can give such a profound and simplistic understanding of yoga. And he said, one cannot be a practitioner without having this yoga. And then he concluded the sixth chapter on contemplation of Ishwar. Then Krishna comes to the seventh chapter, deeper aspect of seeing God in everything. All right? He introduced this chapter because in the sixth chapter, Krishna himself introduces. He said, hey, listen to me carefully. Tatshruno. What is it? Krishna urges Arjuna to listen attentively. And one of the important words in this chapter is that I am the ability in man and woman both. Whatever ability we show, right? Ability from Krishna's perspective, it is not arrogance. Sometimes people will tell her, you should not become so expert, you'll become arrogant. No, if you are expert in something, you go deeper into that, you have a proper understanding of it. That, that ability is nothing but a representation of Krishna. What a encouraging verse, right? That is the magnanimity of Sanatana Dharma. And then Krishna speaks in the 8th chapter, what he speaks in the 8th chapter? Yeah. Achieving perfection through contemplation. The power of time is explained. If you study carefully, you know, one of the greatest tragedy in the human existence is that we focus on our own self. We decide the entire world based upon our life. And what is our life? Our life is a life of short-lived temporariness. We take birth. We grow. We work. We become old and we die. When the focus is on our own self, then everything appears to be flitting and temporary. But that is not the goal of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita does focus on ourself. But more than that, Bhagavad Gita focuses on the legacy. I may not be there. Right? A father may not be there. Mother may not be there. Brother may not be there. Sister may not be there. Husband may not be there. Wife may not be there. But the husbandhood, the wifehood, the fatherhood, the teacherhood, the kinghood is an eternal reality. And therefore, in this chapter, Krishna, while speaking the power of time, he again emphasizes to Arjuna, he does not only say, remember me. He does not only say, fight. He harmonizes for the legacy and personal perfection. Tasma sarveshu kaleshu ma manusmara yuddhacha. Yuddha is for the legacy, smaran is for oneself. In this way, the eighth chapter becomes an interesting principle. And then Krishna comes to the ninth chapter, the most confidential knowledge. What a magnanimity. He gives that assurance to Arjuna. Yat karoshi, yadashnasi, yat jivoshi, dadasi, yat tapasasi kauntaya, tat kurusha madarpanam. Whatever sacrifice, whatever charity, you perform. What do you do? You do unto a sacrifice. In this very chapter, Krishna also said the accessibility of pleasing God. Right? Patram, Pushpam, Phalam, Toyam. I remember one boy gave to one of his teacher, spiritual master, a toy actually. And his guru said, Patram, Pushpam, Toyam, Pushpam, Putram, Phalam, Toyam. Right? Like if you go to Saudi Arabia, there is nothing to offer. Krishna would have said, okay, offer me the dates. But he is speaking in the land of Bharat, there is plenty of water. There is plenty of flowers. It is not about the flower. It is not about the water. It is not about the leaf. It is the accessibility of these ingredients. And then in this very chapter, Krishna also assured Arjuna that accidentally if some mistake happens to 
a devotee, a lover of Krishna, he will be declared Dharmatma very soon because he continues the path of spirituality. And then in the 10th chapter, Krishna spoke about the divinity present in everything. Right? Arjuna asked that question, Krishna, where will I see you? Because my life is not a life of temple. My life is not life in the monastery. I live in the real world. Then what did Krishna say? Keshu, Keshu, Chava. Arjuna asked that question. And then Krishna, in one sense, elaborated the sixth chapter's verse. Yamam Pashati Sarvatara Sarvam Chame Pashati. The tenth chapter is nothing but seeing the Supreme Bhagavan in everything, in moon, in sun, in the mountains, in the flowing of the river. Right? Because that makes more easy. And in the eleventh chapter, what did Krishna do? Krishna told Arjuna, now ten chapter is seeing everything in Krishna. And 11th chapter is actually seeing, uh, 10th chapter is seeing Krishna in everything and 11th is seeing everything in the Bhagavan. Right? So there is no contradiction. Some people want to see, follow the Advaita philosophy. Advaita philosophy means what? To see the energy of the Supreme Lord everywhere. That is the 10th chapter. 11th chapter is practicing the philosophy of seeing only Krishna. I don't see the mountain. Remember Arjuna told his teacher Dronacharya, what do you see? I said, I don't, I don't see anything. I don't see that. I don't see anything but only the eye of a bird. Right? The entire tree, all other brothers, all his friends and colleagues, everybody were focused only in that eye. If Arjuna can practice that concentrated meditation, it is but natural that Krishna will speak. The 11th chapter seeing everything in the Supreme Brahman. And then it concluded in the 11th chapter. Again Krishna explained to Arjuna. What is that? Performing your karma in his consciousness. And the 12th chapter, before we claim that I am a devotee, right? I am a bhakti yogi. I lose my heart in Vrindavan. We have to hear what is the definition of bhakti according to Sri Krishna only. Right? Before we become prema bhakta, raganuga bhakta, ragatmika bhakta, the foundational principle of Bhagavad Gita, the, the Bhakti Yoga, what Krishna explains is very interesting. Advaishta sarva bhetana maitra karune vacha nirmamo nirahankara samasuka sukakshami. Right? Santushta kena chit aniketa stiramatir. So Krishna speaks the foundational values of a practicing personality. And he says, these are all very dear to me. Very beautiful chapter. That is Bhakti Yoga. And the 13th chapter is understanding the field. Kshetra. Kshetra, the field. And the activity in the field. And the performer of the field. And the knower of the field. Right? It is like 13th chapter basically. In one sense, if you study carefully. It is like what Newton studied matter. Of course, Krishna goes deeper also. And in the 14th chapter, going deeper into that Kshetra, dividing it into three modes of material nature. Gunatraya Vibhaga Yoga Nama. And then comes the 15th chapter. What is the 15th chapter? The 15th chapter is basically... Beyond the field and modes, there is some root. If you take 13th chapter as Newton and philosophy, 14th as the Einstein's philosophy, but they don't speak about Bhagavan. They don't speak about Brahman. Krishna speaks in the 13th chapter, speaks on the 14th chapter, but in the 15th chapter, what does he say? 
beyond this srishti he talks about that tree you know upside tree and there is another reality beyond the conditioned soul and beyond the liberated soul there is a purushottama right once understanding him that is called as a purushottama yoga and then krishna comes to the 16th chapter what is that the 16th chapter is the chapter of basically dividing the sura and asura nature right and uh, there is some mistake here 16th chapter sura and asura nature and krishna assures arjuna my dear arjuna you are not born of a demonic quality you are born of a divine quality and interestingly if you study the 16th chapter krishna explains about who achieves the hell he doesn't talk about those who people don't believe in him he talks about those who have a evil character they achieve the hellish planet and therefore in the 17th chapter krishna explain arjuna asked krishna you know about those who worship without proper scriptural prescription that is what shraddha shraddha traya yoga nama it is a very interesting in the western religion or in the arabic religion they do not have division of faith whether it is radical faith whether it is moderate faith it doesn't matter what kind of faith you have faithfulness is considered as the highest quality but our krishna doesn't do like that he is so profound in his presentation he divides faith into three characters tamoguna shraddha rajoguna shraddha and satvoguna shraddha right all the shri shraddhas not necessarily all the shraddhas elevate the lowest of shraddha can cause violence right can take on to the lower species of life also in the bhagavatam third canto kapil muni explain three kinds of bhakti tamogun bhakti rajogun bhakti and satva guna bhakti therefore shraddha without dharma can cause limitless trouble to us and then we come to the 18th chapter after speaking all this arjuna if you study arjuna arjuna still has the conflict of actually understanding samadhi in karma arjuna still has a confusion in regards to tyaga and sanyas right now generally what we see sanyas means what sanyas means basically giving up everything that is what people generally understand so yes there is an official sanyas as a position and also there is a sanyas as a disposition the emphasis of bhagavad gita the emphasis of bhagavad gita is not about giving up your duties right one who gives up everything he may be superficial sanyasi that is easy to do but what krishna is recommending to arjuna is answered conclusively by shri krishna if you study that chapter i would recommend when you go home this chapter verse by verse if you read verse by verse you will be fascinated in the 18th chapter of the beginning krishna say some scholars some people say all work should be given up and some say should not be given up now arjuna hear from me conclusively now we have to make a decision whether we want to hear this scholar that rishi this rishi or we want to hear the words of sri krishna and then he explains that some learned men advocate giving up all kinds of fruitive activities while other sages maintain that acts of sacrifice charity and penance should never be abandoned huh? act of sacrifice charity and penance are not to be given up 
but should be performed as they purify even great souls. Now, this was the conclusive answer of Arjuna, uh, by Sri Krishna to Arjuna. Therefore, the question doesn't arise only. One of the greatest myth people have, what is the greatest myth? With Sarvadharma and Parityajya, I have no duties to perform. Now, the entire Bhagavad Gita is nothing but it is an integrated aspect leading towards Sarva Dharman Parityaja, but Sarva Dharman Parityaja does not cancel even one verse of Bhagavad Gita. Right? Nowhere it is mentioned, oh, this is cancelling. Right? Sharanagati without Sadharma, without Swadharma, it is redundant. It cannot function properly. You need to have a you need to have a place to stand, right? When you are a desperate person, when you are working very hard for doing something, all your human endeavor when it is placed to do that, when you experience limitation, you can only experience limitation when you are actually doing something what you are supposed to do. And when that limitation comes at that time, a living entity. Says, oh God, you know, it is beyond me. While working, a simple factual principle, like if you go to a village, nowadays people don't sweat here, right? I'm also sitting in an AC place. You must also be sitting in an AC place. And in the winter season, you don't sweat so much. Nowadays people don't see sweating, right? But if you go to a village, a farmer or a person carrying a load of a carpenter, a blacksmith, in India, sweating is a quite common thing. But while sweating, what does that person say? He says, whatever is supposed to happen, it is going to happen on me. So there is the prayas. And there is a, also the prayas is bringing him the sweat. And that prayas, which is bringing him the sweat, also gives him a Sweet understanding, jo yaha lika hua na, whatever is written here, it is going to happen. That is not a pessimistic idea. That is the beauty of Bhagavad Gita. It harmonizes between action and dependence. Krishna spoke that in the 8th chapter. Therefore, Swadharma is so much emphasized in the Bhagavad Gita. And therefore, the last day, the third day, when we study the last part of the 18th chapter, beyond the 45th verses, then you'll see how Krishna is building up the concept of Sarva Dharma and Paritya. Right? And therefore he says, art of sacrifice, charity and penance should never be given up. So all these activities should be performed without any expectation of result as a matter of duty. That is my final opinion. Again, so many places, the third chapter, second chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, sixth chapter. How many places Krishna brings this concept of performing action without being obsessed with the result? We discussed this many times. Now it's a common sense. Right? Krishna expects us to know this. What is it? That if you perform certain activity, why do you plant a sapling? Why do you sow the seed in the field? Because it is common sense that it is going to produce something. Right? Why do you get educated? So that you will get something out of that education. Why do parents build their house so that they can stay safely? So it's a common sense for every action, there is a particular result. So Krishna is not challenging the result. Right? Action will give rise to result. But what Krishna is emphasizing to us, again this is in the 18th chapter, this is real sannyas. Giving up is very easy. But while staying there in that activity is not becoming obsessed with the result. Yesterday I was talking to somebody, 
right? And is practicing a medical line. And within no time, he started making good money. But there is an anxiety, what will happen? I said, see the statistics of last one year. Make a figure and average how much money are you making last one year. If you understand that, there should not be no anxiety. There should not be any anxiety because there is an average you are making so much of money. Why there should be an anxiety? Mathematically, you are proven that you are capable, you are qualified, you are producing the result. If you are anxiety, if you are in anxiety, what will happen? Your work will become not so sharp. Because and tomorrow's anxiety will choke your today's performance also. And therefore, Krishna telling Arjuna, all the activities should be performed without any expectation of the result. As a matter of duty is my final opinion. If you are able to practice this, this will give greater result than being attached to something and it is proven psychologically also I've quoted there is a book called as matter uh, it's called as a you know mindset and this mindset book statistically proves what Krishna is speaking 5000 years ago and unfortunately our people said oh this is not possible it is not practical how can we do something without being attached no the result will come he is not questioning of the result he again speaks about this and then what does Krishna talk about? He said, very simple. Nowadays people are focusing on feeling rather than factual reality. Somebody was telling, I was listening, that spirituality does not guarantee only happiness. A spiritualist person is like a warrior. When you go to the battlefield, there is no guarantee of your victory. Right? But there is a potential of you getting defeated. You know, what happened in the World Cup final? The World Cup final that India, not Bharat, was always winning. Sometime the Bharat would come there with a, the spirit of, uh, you know, chanting the names of Ram. Of course, that was also seen wrongly. India was winning all the games. When they had to meet Australia in the final, what happened? Why people suffered so much? Because there was a confirmed confidence. They went there to celebrate the victory. And therefore, people paid a ticket, 55,000 rupees in a black ticket, which was costing 2,000 rupees. Somebody was insisting me, Are, aajao, dekhne ke le. Uske par article likh sakte ho. I said, look, I like cricket, but sitting whole day in a stadium, it's a rape of my intelligence. Huh? I use a very strong word. E mere buddhi ka shoshan hai. I cannot do that. And secretly I was saying that this one, Right, India winning, you will make them cult figure. And what happened? The Australians were playing with very clear understanding. This is also teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna explains in the Mahabharata to Arjun when he asks this question, Krishna, who will win? Arjuna will, uh, Bhima will win or um, Duryodhan will win. That was the final match. And what did Krishna tell? Krishna said, look Arjun, you cannot beat Duryodhan by skill. Skill-wise, Duryodhan is superior to Bhima. And most importantly, and he quoted some, you know, Niti Shastra. He said, my dear Arjun, you know what? He said, somebody has nothing to lose. For Duryodhana, there is nothing left to lose. He has lost everybody. There are no family member left in him. So therefore, such a person who has no expectation and is a fighter, they are the deadliest of warrior. Mahabharat padte te, hamare log, to samaj me aata tha ki, Baba, we should be careful. 
the Australians came like Duryodhan. Right? They have nothing to lose. But our people came like Bhima without Krishna. And what happened? Beaten so badly. Right? Beaten so badly. In one sense, it was good. India lost and Bharat won. Psychologically, it was a very good principle. People may say, how can you say like this? Of course. Because whether they win or lose, what they make money is totally different. Those who were crying, they lost money also. The players who were crying, they continue to make money. Right. So therefore, the very important principle is that when you go with expectation, you cry the greatest pain in your life. But you go to play, I need to play without any attachment, without any expectation. Then what will happen? Even in winning, you are not obsessed with victory. And in lose, you are not depressed in defeat. You are soberly moving forward. And that is what Krishna is speaking in the... And that is Sharanagati. Right? Sharanagati is not simply a sentiment. Sharanagati is the process. This is one of the first steps of Sharanagati. What is it? Anukulya se sankalpa. What is most, most Anukulya? The most Anukulya is I fight, but I am not attached to the result. I fight very hard. Huh? In the second chapter, Krishna told Arjun, doesn't matter you win or lose. In the entire Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna, the Supreme Bhagavan, doesn't give any promise to Arjuna in regards to Arjuna's victory. You show me one verse in the Bhagavad Gita. In the entire, from the first chapter to 18th chapter, only in the 11th chapter when Krishna appears as a Vishwarupa, he gives some indication to Arjun. Just because you are a devotee of Krishna, victory is not guaranteed. And this is one of the greatest tragedy in the religion that during India's final match, so many yagyas were performed for India's victory. So many Jyotish Shastra had predicted that India will win. This is against the Vedanta philosophy. This is the, against the Bhakti philosophy. This is against Gita philosophy. If you read carefully, the Pandavas were also doing Sandhyabandhan. The Kauravas were also doing Sandhyabandhan. That has nothing to do with victory or defeat. Rather, they were doing all this. They were praying, no doubt. But in that prayer, there was no expectation. They were praying to their Ishtadev, give me the capacity beyond victory, the ability to handle the consequences. You know, because India lost, hundreds of people were ridiculing. Because your approach is wrong. You went with that expectation that was wrong. And therefore, Krishna, in this part, the first section of 18th chapter, he brings one of the most brilliant idea of five factor for success and failure. And again, I, therefore I said, go back to your home, read the translation first, verse by verse, verse by verse. And if you can connect the Sanskrit words also along with the translation, you'll be mesmerized. Wow! How Sri Krishna is giving me an idea to be a fighter, to be a player, to be taking part in the world, whether victory or defeat doesn't matter because if I keep playing, there are greater chances. You take any average player. Take again test only. Cricket match only. Other than Donald Broadman. Right? There is no player whose average is beyond 58. What does life teach? Life teaches you will be successful 58%. You'll be successful 45%. You'll be successful 52%. If your average drops to 18%, 17%, you'll not be part of the team. It has to go beyond 45, 50. Right? But to be 100%, 
it is not possible that only happens in the ssc examination that happens only in icsc examination they are basically falsely given 99.99% but life is not like that life is like a snake and ladder game and therefore krishna explains to arjuna this five factors place of action body kshetra your workplace whatever you want to take it as take it and instrument for action action itself the performer these are the four factors are the responsibility of a jiva from this perspective we are focusing on purushartha these are the four purusharthas and the fifth one is a daiva beyond our ability so krishna tells arjuna arjuna these are the five factors which were responsible for our success and failure only puja is burdening god only confidence is making oneself arrogant so when there is a harmony between our endeavor and the grace the karuna of god like the stoic philosophers right it has certain resemblance in some aspect they consider this entire creation to be extension of god virata purusha and they said all the resources what is required for us to live stable and happily are there in this creation but we need four things what are they courage rise moderation knowledge and justice judiciousness if you have these four things then what you are supposed to do only offer gratitude to your guru and krishna don't expect anything from them because they have already given to you so this four purushartha and fifth daiva then krishna explains to arjuna if you follow this arjuna even if you are killing you are not killing this is the beauty of bhagavad gita on the battlefield of kurukshetra also arjuna is killing other day i went to meet somebody he was a soldier he was a army doctor and he gave an example he fought the 1965 battle 1961 battle his granddaughter you know she came from a very stable family she didn't experience any violence anywhere she asked this question dada ji did you kill people so the question is tough asking that question to a soldier did you kill people he said i didn't kill because i was a doctor but i can tell you something he said they were going in the battle ground as they were going to the battle ground so at some point of time the water bottles of indian soldier bharatiya soldiers got over and there was a well nearby now you don't know whether that water is poisoned contaminated right so then it was the responsibility of a doctor to tell the purity of the water and how will you do that they didn't had the lab there what you have to do you have to give it to somebody he said i couldn't give it to my soldiers because their life was precious then they had to give that water to the old man somewhere close by bole mujhe bahut bura laga abhi bhi pata nahi ki maine theek kiya ki nahi ki i was experimenting him to taste the water if he survives after 15 20 minutes then it is drinkable agar usme poison hota if there was a poison in that water he would die so will i get that crime of killing the purpose is important the intention was today also now also as a soldier he is reflecting upon ki i think it was not the right thing to do but there was no other way to prove the quality of the water so from that perspective krishna is telling arjuna arjuna in that condition you know even if you kill you are not killing because your purpose is very clear 
you have a reflective mindset and you are doing whatever you are doing for the higher cause, the cause of dharma, cause of God, not to be radically, you know, terrorist. I want to do for God and kill people. No, not like that. It was, it has no other option, but still there is a reluctancy. So this is a Sharanagati. So therefore the entire 18th chapter is leading towards that Sharanagati. And tomorrow we will discuss, you know, different kinds of uh, duties, different kinds of knowledge. How does Varana Dharma operate? And again, Krishna explains very interestingly that if you perform your duty without doing somebody else's duty and bring your Adhyatma into that picture, your work only will give you perfection. And Krishna in this in this part of the Bhagavad Gita explains that there are Vairagya three kinds. Just giving up everything. Oh, I don't want to do anything. That Vairagya, even if you are a sannyasi, right? It is in the mode of ignorance. I don't say. Bhagavad Gita is saying. Giving up due to fear. Oh, I don't want to do this. It is so complicated. Then it is Rajoguna. That is not glorified. Again, Krishna says, what is Sattva Guna? Not being attached to the results. Go to play the match. Not to celebrate World Cup Aega. Right? When I saw, when I was coming from the airport from Jagannath Puri, I saw hundreds of people. You know, they were so disturbed, so hurt. Why? Because they had gone with a clear intention of happiness. Somebody was telling me, one boy was so confident that India will win. He took loan of 12 lakh rupees and bet for Indian team. And he lost everything. We know one story. There could be hundreds of such stories. Therefore, anyone who goes with the confident expectation, forgetting, forgetting the rule of life, he suffers now he suffers in the future and he had suffered in the past also. But if you follow the teaching of the Bhagavad Gita, whether you are playing cricket match or you are doing whatever you are doing, you are ready for the next event to perform with great satisfaction and contemplation. Therefore, this is Anukulyasya Sankalpa. Right? And then next part the sum part we'll discuss also Anukulyasa Sankalpa and Pratikulyasa Varjanam, the first two steps of Sharanagati. Thank you for your kind attention. Any questions or comments? Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for taking us through the entire landscape of Bhagavad Gita. So if you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand and we'll invite you into the conversation or you could possibly post it in the chat you, box. Posting is better. Okay. So please post your question. Uh, Prabhuji, in the meanwhile, uh, you know, while we perform our duties uh, without much expectations uh, and we experience failures, repeated failures, mm -hmm. uh, it is quite uh, demoralizing, uh, demotivating. So uh, in such cases, uh, what do you suggest? Uh, yeah, so that is, again, that is a part of life. As I mentioned, when your average goes below 18-20%, what happens? You are removed from the team. Right? You are removed from the team, but not removed from the action itself. If you are not playing the test match, you will play for your IPL team. If you are not playing the IPL team, you will play for your state team. If you are not playing for the state team, you will play for your city team. If you are not playing for the city team, you will play for your club. Right? You don't give up playing. Right? So those who keep playing, they are the one if not there, they are playing somewhere. So similarly, the repeated failure does not stop you from performing that particular action. You may not, you may not play in the international level. You may not play in the national level. But somewhere you have to play because you don't have a choice than not playing. You know, the pain is a reality. But anxiety and depression is not allowed. 
right? One has to overcome that also. And therefore it is explained, again in the sixth chapter, if you read carefully, if you are getting defeated, take certain work where you are able to experience small, small victories. Simple example, if you are not, if you're not able to get up at 5 o'clock, you are trying since ages. You know, there is an inspiration to get up at 4 o'clock, but there is a conditioning of getting up at 10 o'clock. So what that will do, that will only cause pain. Oh, I'm not able to do. I'm such a bad person. So better that you get up at 9, 9 o'clock. So that one hour victory, oh God, I got to get up at one hour, one hour early. So it's the small, small victory just like if you are not making big money, you can make some money. If you are not making 10,000 rupees per day, at least you can make 500 rupees per day. That is your beginning of your victory. Or at least you will reduce the loan. Right? So therefore the world is designed in such a way, even the worst of the beggar, one who is begging, even he experiences success in his life. Like I went to this school in uh, Bhuneshwar. There was a girl. She was found in a garbage can. Her parents dropped her. Right In India, even the empty plastic bag, which had a milk in it, we save it. Even an empty plastic bag is valuable, but they had dropped their daughter in the garbage can. Imagine the psychological impact on that child that I am unwanted. They picked her up, right? Somebody picked her up. She was in the coma for three, four days. And now she travels across, right? Performing, rocking. So her background, her karma may be to be dumped. But then with the right facility, she is so confident, so strong. She doesn't know her story. But those who know her story, they have tears in her eyes. They are in eyes. Wow. So if she can have a future, so to say that, you know, this is my destiny, that I will have a perpetual suffering, that means you don't know what life is. Right? Life does not allow you to become perpetually less than 18%. Could be a test score. But you go back and play club and you'll experience you're making more than 50 runs. That is the one has to understand. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Very hope giving. Uh, we have uh, a question on the chat box. Uh, in 18.66, Srila uh, Prabhupada says that leave everything, karma, vanashram, and just surrender. What does he really mean? So then read what Arjuna did he give up? Did Gopis give up? We will discuss that on the third day. You understand the obsession that I am a Brahmana. Obsession that I am uh, like in the Mahab in the Ramayana, when Hanumanji came to meet Lord Ramachandra, what did he say? He gave his identity. I am a secretary of Sugriv. Right? Ram did not speak to Hanumanji for a few days, but Ram sent Hanumanji to find Mother Sita. That was the first time he spoke after many days. Hanumanji realized his mistake for identifying himself as a secretary of Sugri. But when he came and met Ravan, what did he say? Dasom ko salendrasya ramasya klishta karmana nihanta shatru sainyanam. He said, I am the servant of Sri Ramachandra, Kloshal And then he added his identity as a secretary of Sugri also. So please understand what Prabhupada meant. You read third chapter. How can you perform any function without having certain responsibility? Gopis went back. Brahmana Patnis went back. Lord Chaitanya told his followers, even Sanyas is a, is a, is a, is a Varana Dharma only. So there is no uh, Sarva Dharma and Parityaja without practicing having certain journey for you. So please understand what he says properly. Because when you use the word, it should have a understanding also based upon the Mahabharat, based upon Bhagavad, based upon Ramayana. Nobody gave up. Nobody gave up. Gopis did not become sannyasis. They continued to become a coward. 
the brahmana patni these are the greatest example of sharanagati they continue to remain the wise of the brahmana patnis arjuna wanted to give up everything he continued to remain as a warrior at what age you know arjuna was almost more than 60 70 year old when he was fighting so therefore it is important for people to understand that you cannot give up your prescribed duty repeatedly krishna says that what do you give up your obsession to that position ki i am the secretary of sugriv you don't give up being a secretary of sugriv but that becomes redundant and your service to lord ram becomes paramount thank you very much prabhu ji there are a couple of questions uh, you mentioned in the beginning uh, the past time of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and sarvabhauma bhattacharya Mm-hmm. also about vyasdev ji what exactly uh, what exact point you made uh, if you could just elaborate on that please sir. so there lord chaitanya told sarvam bhattacharya uh, sanatan goswami i didn't speak something was flowing through me because uh, you know so there i was mentioning that the knowledge what krishna and lord chaitanya spoke it was inspired by the right surrounding and the right student no that is the point we are mentioning okay so we uh, there's one more question there are two types of devotees for example madhendra puri who did not do any effort for his bodily maintenance similarly pralad maharaj did not make uh, uh, much of effort uh, how do we understand both uh... who said pralad maharaj you know he became a king he fought war against lord vishnu only he he ruled you know he earned wealth so please you know and then with sir with uh, madhendra puri if you are able to live like madhendra puri in the forest not that somebody buys a bungalow to in vrindavan and you have 10 disciples and you say krishna is caring no somebody is earning money for that you know so to imitate you know if you are living in new york earning 1000 dollars every day and you are talking about i want to live like madhendra puri it is not possible right so one has to see where madhendra puri lived what kind of life he had and what kind of life you are living there is not even one story of madhendra puri being repeated it's a great inspirational story very rare right so therefore we have to see you cannot practice that story thank you prabhu ji so ji a little bit of attachment uh, will help us uh, in progressing uh, what is your... that uh, there's a question which says a little bit of attachment towards the goal uh, will help us to progress it is not attachment it is concentration again i said in the beginning when you are performing your duties you are doing your planting the seed so that it can grow you are having a sapling it can give fruits it's a very clear why call it as an attachment it is a mathematical reality but if you are not planting it properly and only thinking about oh itna phal aana chahiye utna phal aana chahiye hath mein phal nahi aayega hath mein you know suka hua ped milega right because you are not focusing on this so please understand what krishna wants to say here also some uh, uh, questions that um, yoga kshemam vahamiham is the promise which means desire fulfilling again you know krishna when he promises something please understand the entire context also we cannot take one of the one of the principle of nyay shastra one of the principle of naya shastra you cannot take one verse out of the entire context right so when krishna promises that is a personal assurance to arjuna and what is that assurance that assurance is not necessarily particular result only it is the ability to handle whatever result comes to you that is the promise he can give so that you can continue to be a warrior fighting whether you win or lose you fight till your last breath so when you. we perform our duty without expectation will our performance be equally passionate compared to someone performing duty with desire to win again same thing you are planting the tree so that the tree should grow nicely and give fruits but don't focus on the result in regards to while performing don't focus on the future when you are supposed to be focusing on the present that is the point krishna is telling if you are focusing on driving right it is but natural that you are going to reach the destination 
but you are focusing mentally emotionally or i need to go i need to go i need to go then you will not drive properly also statistically it is proven those who focus obsessively in the future they fail miserably right they do not pass miserably they do not pass clearly right in the, uh, How to control? How to control our thought? Let the thoughts flow. Do not be worried about the thoughts, because thoughts will come. You know the mind has the. What does Krishna say? Arjuna said, "Chanchalam mana hi Krishna pramatti balavat dhridam." He said, "Yes, Arjuna, I agree with you." Krishna said, "Why?" He didn't say why. Your he said, "Let the thought come." All right. You cannot control the thoughts. right what you can do is don't be impacted by those thoughts do what you are supposed to do you know and again by the process of meditation it is again proven by the process of meditation you can minimize the speed of your thoughts and eventually your action becomes more prominent than your thoughts thoughts will continue to come but they will not bother they will be like a background music you will take one last question yeah prabhuji there is a question by uh, mata ji she says that uh, not doing others duty how does it apply in a work situation where you may volunteer to do someone else's duty as well as at home you know so as long as it is see when we start doing somebody else's duty you know then what happens then you how long can you do it one time you can do two time can you three time you can do in the mahabharat it is explained there is also called as apad dharma there is in the bhishma when he spoke to yudhishthir maharaj he spoke raja dharma in shanti parva he spoke raja dharma he spoke about apad dharma and he spoke about moksha dharma what is apad dharma apad dharma is a emergency duty but every time you are doing somebody else's duty it will choke and suffocate you as long as it is within our control apad dharma the emergency duty should not control us when that happens then there is an anxiety then there is basically mental anxiety it increases your blood pressure you know in the present world why people are doing somebody else's duties year year after year right and then then people say i'm exhausted because they're doing something all the kapis they were very clear they could have told you know for ram ke liye hum apna jaan de denge ne ram ke liye unhone apne capacity ko bataya they said i can only jump 50 yojana i can jump only 60 yojanas right they were working hard you can't question their sincerity sincerity does not increase your capacity right sincerity makes you sincere do as much as you are supposed to do if it is your beyond capacity then you communicate nicely if you don't communicate then you will speak louder crying weeping within your own self and somewhere you break down therefore again krishna said what is yoga yukta hara yukta vihara yukta chesta su karma su that is the principle proji in a home situation uh, you know sometimes uh, a man is expected to even contribute uh, to the running of the house in terms of you know cooking and cleaning uh, maybe mata ji was trying to understand from that perspective that is it okay you know if so cooking is always uh, there is cooking is nothing to do with uh, lady swadharma most of the cooking in the world is done by men the largest cooking in the hotel men do in the festival kitchen you know in the in the yatra you know ladies were also helping but men were also helping so there is no such thing as cooking is women's job ah uh, generally in women cook in the home but there are certain communities the brahmana communities all the men also they know how to cook you know so similarly if there is a situation where where there are no servants if you are working and wife is also working and man is also working and man is expecting wife to be providing him all the three meals when she is also bringing then it becomes unreasonable illogical she may do it out of submission to the tradition 
but that's a stupidity because she will be exhausted she'll be angry she'll be upset so better uh, i know so many people you know wherever the men go to the kitchen where women are working also then if they go to the kitchen there are less trouble in their life but both the people are working and then you don't get a good food then cooking becomes simply a work some other get it done but if you make cooking as an art both party are involved then you get best of the food so any work there is no such rule mentioned or oh, garland should only be made by women right before so many ladies came to our temple all of us used to do garland i never made garland in my life right i used to make 6 hours garland right so there is no such thing as so such thing as this is particularly meant for even in the upanishad it is explained the original uh, the the national anthem in the vedas it is said let our women be the fighters also that means they should be ready to fight their enemies in the reserve force jani jansi rani lakshmi bai had a women's army ahilya bai had a women's army right in the in the jaimini bharat arjuna fought with the entire women's army but the point is when the men are there they can learn it in emergency they can do it right so therefore if everybody can able to do little bit everything then the work become very easy but people are become very specialized now right when they become specialized then you become vulnerable therefore there is one famous author called uh, nasim taleb wrote a book called as anti fragile the modern civilization is very fragile if you make them do something else other than what they are doing they break down they go into depression oh this was not what i learned for but if you especially indians go through that right but if you learn the art of doing everything you know that is good for you it helps you to grow so i'll stop here and we'll meet tomorrow 7:30 again to discuss the second session thank you very much prabhu ji hari krishna